friend and I were walking around downtown Phoenix looking at Christmas lights this past holiday season, and we walked into a public women's restroom. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw something that caused me to do a double take. There was a guy in the women's restroom. Immediately, all of these confused thoughts started running through my head. Did I, did I walk into the wrong bathroom? Am I really seeing what I think I'm seeing? Is it, is it safe for me to stay? Should I leave and call for help? And then it hit me. Under Phoenix law, that guy has the legal right to be here. You see, Phoenix passed a sexual orientation gender identity law, which makes it illegal for businesses or public places to make any distinction among people based on their sexual orientation or gender identity. So how in the world did we reach a place in our society where we're passing laws that allow men in the women's restrooms? Well, much of this can be traced back to political activists and lobbyists who are spending millions of dollars to pass SOGIs at all three levels of our government, federal, state, and the local or city level. Now, they've repeatedly failed to convince Congress to pass a SOGI at the federal level, and less than half of states have passed a SOGI at the statewide level. So the primary push right now is really to pass these laws at the local or city level. So here's how it generally works. An activist will approach a sympathetic city council member who then proposes the bill to his colleagues as a fix to a problem that, well, no one actually knew existed. But because the bill is clouded with words like discrimination, intolerance, and, well, the city council members, of course, don't want to appear uncaring, they oftentimes will quickly pass the bill into law without fully knowing its ramifications. So consequently, the community may not even be aware that a SOGI is being considered until it's already passed and on the books. Well, when SOGIs are passed into law, we insert them into what we call non-discrimination laws. And that sounds like a, a good and reasonable thing, right? But in actual practice, SOGIs are very problematic. For example, one challenge right off the bat is that even though we think we know what we're talking about when we use terms like sexual orientation and gender identity, these terms are actually pretty vague. They're not very well defined. I logged onto Facebook the other day and realized that Facebook now offers over 60 different gender options. No longer do you just select male or female, but you can choose from a wide variety of custom genders as well. Gender fluid, gender non-conforming, gender questioning, gender variant, gender queer, bi-gender, cisgender. And with regard to sexual orientation, even the experts disagree about what exactly it is. Some experts say sexual orientation is sexual attraction to men, women, both sexes, or neither sex. Other experts disagree and say, well, no, 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 it's actually personal identity based on your sexual attractions. Still other experts say, well, it's, it's really more behavioral in nature, based on your mannerisms or based on your sexual conduct. And then other experts say, look, guys, it's really all of the above. But the bottom line is that sexual orientation just isn't an obvious or easily identifiable category like race. So ironically, we're actually forced to resort to stereotyping people. Not only do SOGIs deal with vague and amorphous and difficult to define categories, but they also have very far-reaching effects. And if I may say so, they oftentimes will even reach absurd practical results. So consider these questions. Can a public school tell a teenage boy who psychologically identifies as a girl and dresses like a girl that he can't play on the girls' softball team? Or can a gay bar owner prefer to hire gay bartenders so that he can attract the type of clientele he's seeking? 
Or what about the corporate business office? Is it allowed to maintain a reasonable dress code and say, men, pantsuits only, while allowing women to wear those skirt suit combinations? Under a soji? The answer to all of these questions is no. Sojis have inserted into the law more confusion than clarity. But let's dig out of the weeds for just a minute. Have we actually even demonstrated that there's a need for sojis? My home city of Phoenix passed a soji just a couple years ago. And in the two years that this law has been on the books, only four complaints, four allegations of discrimination have been filed, all of which, by the way, were dismissed as baseless. If sexual orientation and gender identity discrimination were truly a widespread and pervasive issue, and people were being fired from their jobs or denied access to public services based on these categories, I would expect to see hundreds of complaints filed in a city the size of Phoenix. And you know, I think that's one thing that made me so upset about finding that guy in the women's restroom. We have no actual evidence that sojis are even needed. But we do have actual evidence that they open the door to all sorts of harm. Sojis make it far too easy for men with evil intentions to exploit these laws. I have no idea whether the guy walking into the women's facility genuinely and sincerely identifies as the opposite sex or whether he's there to harm me. A man in Washington state used a soji to gain access to the women's swimming pool locker room, where he then repeatedly exposed himself to girls as young as six years old. And local officials said, nothing we can do about it, guys. He's got the legal right to be there. Girls, if you're uncomfortable, find a different locker room. And in Toronto, a dangerous sexual predator used a soji to gain access to women's shelters where he then raped two different women. As a woman, I feel vulnerable and unsafe, knowing that my government places so little value on my personal privacy and safety. Sojis confuse, they don't clarify. Sojis create problems, they don't solve them. And as a society, we can still show concern for an individual who's struggling with feeling accepted or, or wrestling with an internal conflict over their gender without passing bad laws. Sojis are distorting, they're unhelpful, and they're outright dangerous. Sojis are bad for our communities, and there are much better ways to promote human flourishing and to protect the freedoms of every member of our society. Thank you.